Vice President of the United States Kamala Harris opened up a marginal 2 percentage point lead over Republican Donald Trump after President Joe Biden ended his re-election campaign and passed the torch to her, a Reuters, Ipsos poll found. She was 2 percent ahead of Donald Trump in a national survey. 44 percent of American voters who participated in the survey supported Harris, and 42 percent supported Trump. The survey was conducted on July 22 to 23 after the current U.S. President Joe Biden announced his withdrawal from the presidential race and endorsed the candidacy of Harris instead. According to a recent poll, 56% of registered voters believe Harris has a sharp mind and problem-solving ability. Among the respondents, the number of those who thought the same about the 78-year-old Trump was 49%. 91% of Democratic voters polled have a favorable opinion of Harris. Three-quarters of them agreed that Democrats should support the candidacy of Kamala Harris. The poll also showed voters a ballot that included independent presidential candidate Robert Kennedy in addition to Harris and Trump. Harris was supported by 42% of voters, and Trump by 38%. Kennedy won the support of 8% of respondents. It should be noted that Trump said that he is ready to hold several debates with Kamala Harris if she becomes the candidate of the Democrats. At his first rally in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Harris said Trump is unfit to lead the country in the 21st century. According to him, the current U.S. election campaign presents two different views of the country, one of them is focused on the future, and the other is focused on the past. Do we want to live in a land of freedom, compassion and the rule of law, or a land of chaos, fear and hatred?" said Kamala Harris to the rally participants with these words. She said, over the past year, I have traveled across the country, talking with Americans about the clear choice in this momentous election. And that is what I will continue to do in the days and weeks ahead. I will do everything in my power to unite the Democratic Party and unite our nation, to defeat Donald Trump and his Extreme Project 2025 agenda. Russians on motorcycles become serious problem for Ukrainian armed forces. The use of motorcycles by Russian occupiers at the front cannot be looked down upon. This statement was made by Dmitry Likovoy, spokesman for the Operational Strategic Group of Forces Kortitsa of Ukraine. Of course, you can approach this in the context of necessity is the mother of invention. However, we have already seen examples more than once when the enemy tries to adapt to the realities that arise. They use ATVs, as was the case in the winter, in the Tavricheski direction. Now they use motorcycles, when weather conditions allow it, he explained. According to him, a motorcycle gives the enemy the opportunity to gain time to get closer to the points where they can dismount and take a seat. How do they fight them? The first means is FPV drones. Drones are now very actively used in many manifestations. It is FPV drones, attack drones, drops, artillery and mortars that are aimed at hitting motorcyclists even when they are detected by aerial reconnaissance somewhere else on the other side of the field. It is very important to destroy them in advance because when they get closer, there may already be bad consequences, noted Dmitry Likovoy. As the Russian military runs low on purpose-made armored vehicles and increasingly turns to civilian vehicles, most notably golf carts and motorcycles, one Russian army brigade is making motorcycle instruction a routine part of its training regimen. The motorcycle school is real. One Russian blogger wrote in a recent post about the 5th Donetsk Brigade, which fights in and around the town of Krasnohorivka in eastern Ukraine. According to Forbes, the Russians began assigning large numbers of Chinese and Belarusian dirt bikes to frontline troops back in the spring. The bikes, along with Chinese Desert Cross all-terrain vehicles, golf carts, effectively are helping mitigate growing shortages of armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles as Russia's wider war on Ukraine grinds towards its 29th month and vehicle losses deepen. The Russians have written off more than 16,000 armored vehicles and other heavy weapons in Ukraine. That's more heavy equipment than many armies have in their entire inventories. The bike troops' assault tactics are simple. They ride as fast as possible across the mine-strewn no-man's-land separating Russian and Ukrainian lines, 
hoping their mount's small size and high speed will help them avoid detection by Ukrainian drones. If they manage to cross the mine and drone zone, they ditch their bikes and fight on foot. A new military speciality is appearing, a second blogger wrote, motorized rifleman. But the bike tactics, while sound in theory, haven't worked very well in the heat and stress of actual combat. Ukrainian mines and drones are everywhere, too thick in the air and under the ground for even the nimblest biker to avoid.